This presentation will talk about another group of mites, the prostigmatid mites. This report aims to know the mite that causes red mange or demodicosis in dogs, learn mite habitat, transmission, pathology, clinical signs, diagnosis, risk factors, treatment and control, be able to compare between localized and generalized demodicosis, and be able to compare the disease presentations of demodicosis, which includes the localized juvenile onset, adult onset, and the pododermatitis. The mites can be classified according to the location of its stigmata or the respiratory pores. For the prostigmatid mites, the stigmata are located anterior to the coxae or the hip joint of the first leg. The prostigmatid mites include the follicle mites. The follicle mites include the demodex species. This diagram shows a comparative anatomy of the prostigmatid mite, astigmatid mite, and the mesostigmatid mite. For the prostigmatid mite, we have the representative species is the demodex species. When we are going to describe its anatomy, it is uh, in terms of its body shape, it is very elongate. In terms of its legs, the legs are very stumpy. And in terms of its collection, it can be collected with hair plucking. For the astigmatid mites, particularly the Coryoptes species, its body is considered to be round to subovate. And as you can notice here, there is much space between the third and the second legs. For the collection, it can be collected with skin scraping. For the mesostigmatid mite, particularly the Dermany species, for its the shape of its body is considered to be oval. And there is little space between the second and the third leg. The collection can be done through tape preparation. There are different species of Demodex according to its host. For dogs, we have the Demodex canis and it is the causative agent of the red mage. We also have the Demodex cati for cats, Demodex bovis for cattle, and Demodex folliculorum and Demodex brevis for humans. Demodex are considered to be normal fauna, but if the disease develops, then usually it is considered to be incurable. This diagram shows the cigar-shaped demodex mites that are recovered from the plucked hairs in a dog. So the hairs can be plucked from the affected skin and then examined under a microscope for the presence of the mites. Alternatively, the skin can be squeezed and then scraped with the blade to collect up the surface debris from the skin. We also have here another diagram of the demodex canis under the microscope. This diagram shows the demodex canis in light and scanning electron microscopy. The length of mites varies between 150 and 285 micrometer. Similar to other mites, the general structure of the demodex consists of the head or the natosoma with its mouth parts. We also have the trunk or the idiosoma and the extremities. The elongated cigar-like idiosoma, ring-like segmentation of the opestosoma, and the very short legs are considered to be characteristic features of the demodex. The demodex canis mites commonly live in the hair follicles and sebaceous glands. Most are considered to be commensal with no pathology. So all normal dogs have a small population of the demodex mites, but some dogs develop an overgrowth of these mites. So when there is an overgrowth of the mites, there is the development of the condition known as red mange, which is uh, characterized by inflammation, alopecia, and scab formation. The canine demodicosis is also known as the red mange or the demodectic mange. It occurs when a large number of demodex canis mites inhabit the hair follicles and the sebaceous glands. In small numbers, these mites are part of the normal flora of the canine skin and usually cause no clinical disease. The mites are transmitted from the dam to the puppies during nursing within the first 72 hours after birth. 
the mites spend their entire life cycle on the host, and the disease is not considered to be contagious. A canidimodicosis occurs when the host cannot limit the mite population. For puppies, they acquire mites at nursing, so the first mites are found in the follicles of the muzzle, and cesarean section puppies do not have demodex. There are three major forms of demodicosis that are seen in dogs. These include the localized demodectic mange. We also have the juvenile onset generalized demodicosis and the adult onset generalized demodicosis. We also have another, the demodectic pododermatitis. The localized form of demodicosis is seen in dogs usually less than one year old at three to six months of age and most of these cases resolve spontaneously. The lesions often consist of one to five well-demarcated small areas of alopecia, erythema, and scaling, and pruritus may or may not be present. A small percentage, about 10%, may um, proceed to the generalized form of demodicosis. So in terms of its uh, location, the location of the lesions can be found in the face, the cranium, the periorbital, as well as the forelegs. These are the clinical presentation of the localized demodicosis. We also have the generalized demodicosis. For the generalized demodicosis, the prognosis is considered to be guarded. So when we say the uh, a guarded prognosis that means that the possible outcome of the disease is considered to be unknown. It is also intractable or the, the disease is considered to be hard to control or uh, difficult to deal with. Since it is generalized, so the lesions are, are involved in large areas of the body and it is characterized by alopecia, erythema, rancid seboria, lymphadenopathy, some hyperkeratosis and possible pruritus. There is also a secondary pyoderma, and this particular disease is considered to be chronic. These are the clinical manifestations of generalized demodicosis. This diagram shows a generalized demodicosis in a young Staffordshire Bull Terrier female. This dog was found abundant in the street and systemically ill. Marked lichenification indicating a chronic nature can be seen and the erythema of the legs and face is strongly suggestive of the diagnosis. Erythema is a type of skin rash caused by injured or inflamed blood capillaries. So this is a flank of a two-year-old West Highland white female dog illustrating an extreme example of red mage. The dog had not been diagnosed initially, allowing the disease to become generalized. There are many postures, some exudation and marked yellow crust, all indicating secondary pyoderma. You also have a young male entire Stratfordshire Bull Terrier with generalized demodicosis. So there is a generalized alopecia. Now, this was a chronic case with hyperpigmentation uh, as seen here as a slate blue color, which is highly suggestive of the disease. Cytological examination did not reveal secondary pyoderma, and the dog was treated with moxidectin and midacloprid weekly for eight weeks. We also have the juvenile onset generalized demodicosis. This is a result of an inherited immunologic defect with functional abnormality associated with a cell-mediated immunity. It is considered to be a severe disease of young dogs with generalized lesions. So the lesions include erythema, papules, alopecia, oily seboria, edema, hyperpigmentation, and crust. There is also an accompanying pododermatitis. So dogs can have systemic illness with generalized lymphadenopathy, lethargy, and fever when deep pyoderma, porocolosis, or cellulitis is seen. Diagnosis includes the deep skin scrapings, hair plucking, 
typically revealing uh, mites, eggs, and larval forms in high numbers. This is a clinical manifestation of the juvenile onset generalized demodicosis. Another form is the adult onset demodicosis. So this form is considered to be an event-mediated demodicosis. Event-mediated because it involves some stress or medical event that triggers immunosuppression allowing the development of the disease. This is often transient depending on the dog's immune status. We also have the demodectic pododermatitis. So this is also known as the digital, interdigital, and plantar disease. And this is always complicated by secondary bacterial infection. This is a diagram of the demodectic pododermatitis in a three-year-old West Highland white female dog. So this was a chronic, uh, chronic di undiagnosed case that had begun two years previously and was therefore considered a juvenile onset. So we have here uh, the gray hyperpigmentation, which is highly suggestive of demodicosis, which was confirmed with hair plugs. Demodic scanis is diagnosed and monitored using deep skin scrapings, trichogram, or hair plug, as well as biopsy. Diagnosis can also be done through fecal flotation, revealing an asymptomatic or localized infection. So rather than relying on just one sampling technique, it is suggested that several procedures performed sequentially on an affected dog to help maximize success in finding the parasite. So this can be done in the following order. We have hair plucks. So when we say hair plucks, now this is a simple technique show, uh, that may show mites in hair follicles. It is very useful in areas where uh, more invasive techniques could cause damage to the dogs or the sampler. For example, in the feed and in the periocular regions. We also have the adhesive tape preparations. So the tape strips are pressed against lesions and the tape is transferred to a microscope slide. This is another useful non-invasive technique in difficult to sample areas, but also where secondary infection has produced an exudate. We also have the impression, impression smears with a glass slide. So these are often successful where there are exudative lesions. And lastly, we have the skin scrapings. The first or the skin is squeezed first and scraping is performed in the direction of the hair follicles using a scalpel blade. The area to be scraped may need clipping after which liquid paraffin is applied to the skin surface. This enables material to adhere to the blade. Deep scrapings causing capillary ooze are necessary. These are the risk factors associated with demodex canis. So first we have immunosuppression, malnutrition, neoplasia or cancer with chemotherapy, and the presence of the endocrine disease. In the case of the adult onset demodicosis, so we need first to cure the immunosuppressive issue and the modicosis should result. Another risk factor is the immunosuppression that is triggered by stress. So the recurrence of generalized demodicosis can be associated with each heat cycle. So in this case, the heat cycle is considered to be a stress factor. We also have the genetic connection. So in the case of the juvenile onset demodicosis, uh, the, this particular form is associated with an immunological deficiency. So these, there are certain breeds of dogs that are more prone to the development of this particular uh, disease form of demodicosis. Treatment options for demodicosis include topical, oral, and rinse treatments. Example of this is the topical moxidectin that can be applied weekly. We also have the daily oral milbimycin, moxidectin, or ivermectin. Isoxazoline products, so example of these uh, brand names are the Bravecto and the NextGuard. 
We also have the rinse preparation. We have the amitras weekly or bi-weekly. The secondary pyoderma can be treated with topical or oral antibiotics. So the deep skin scrapings can also be used to monitor the treatment success. So when there is a remission, we can continue further the treatment for another four to eight weeks. So it is important to note that clinical cure without parasitic cure is uh, a factor for the recurrence. So elimination of all the mites is considered to be difficult. So extended treatments are needed for this particular uh, type of parasitic infestation. So the control of the mycosis is considered to be an added benefit for heartworm and flea prophylaxis with macrocyclic lactones and isosazolines. Spay neuter can also be considered with the mycosis. This is because immunosuppression can be due to stress and heat cycle is a stress factor. We also have the hereditary link. So there are some dogs which are more predisposed to the development of juvenile onset pneumoticosis because of a immunological defect and this is uh, considered to be hereditary in nature.